It's Robbie here for the Real Football Fan Show. I'm here with a legend. <laughs> you are a, what are you laughing for? You're a legend, man. Watford legend, Troy oh. Deeney, captain of Watford. Thank you. I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Troy. I'm just Troy, the normal person that happens to play football. That's about it. You know what, first of all, I've got to say, you're having an outstanding season at the moment. Um, sitting high in the league. What, 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 what's the aim for Watford this year? Top four? <laughs> no, that's what. It's funny, because like, from, from our perspective, obviously, you see the so-called pundits and it's like we're supposed to be, I think we were favourite to be relegated, second favourite to be relegated. I think the manager was the first on all the bookmakers to be sacked and stuff. So, like, people give us a lot of um, fuel to the fire for pre-season because we were, like, kind of felt a bit disrespected in terms of, like, you're just writing us off like we're not, I think it's our fourth, maybe our fifth season in the Prem now. And people are kind of writing us off. So we've had a great, great summer. Um, and yeah, just did a lot of work, man. Like everyone's eating really good. We changed all the food, the way we're training, like we're training a little bit later now and stuff. So mm. all these different things that's been fought out and, and thankfully it's shown in the performances. Brilliant performances. I mean, your performance the other day against Tottenham. Mm -hmm. Tottenham, that, that, that was brilliant. I mean, I really enjoyed that. I mean, and the strength and pace and you know tenacity you showed in that game is brilliant. Yeah, the boys, the boys are digging in, and you know what we've got now? We've got a real belief that we are fitter than most teams, and I know it's it's early doors to do, feel like that. But when you're going into games full of confidence in terms of you've done all the right preparation, like I said, we was a goal down, and a lot of times in the past we probably would have folded against the, you know a, a bigger team. We would have went ah, like we lost it already. But the boys, literally from that goal, we just kicked on and went right. Let's have a mm -hmm. goal then, and. I think that's what, he's, that's what we're feeling real good about that because it's always like, even though we'd won the three before, it was like, oh, you you only beat Burnley. Oh, you only beat um, mm. Crystal Palace. Like it, People were kind of downplaying the fact that it's tough to go to Burnley and get a decent result. It's tough to play Palace at any time. So, um, yeah, we got their results and uh, now it's kind of, we've got the confidence with it and people are giving us a little bit of respect. But we, our job now is to just feet on the ground and keep working. Now listen, on our show, it's all about football fans yep. and obviously Watford legend, Watford captain. But what is the team that you supported from you as a kid? What, what's your team? My team's Birmingham City. Um, was there when we beat you guys at, at Wembley. Why do you have to come and say that I'm now? just saying, I'm before the Martins <laughs> with a tapping. I'm, uh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm on video. Like, yeah? Cause I'm, yeah, because I was... I was, I was here then actually, that would have been what, four or five years ago? And uh, yeah, I was here, but I'm in a suit, like going mad. Yeah. And um, Scotty Daniel I used to play with at Warsaw, he was obviously that blues, he's on crutches and like we just had a little embrace. It was, it was a good day, it was a good day for us. Yeah, no, it was a good day, it was, <laughs> it was, it was a good day. But um, yeah, so the team that you go to mm. and the fans give you the most stick, where's that? <laughs> It's a tough one. It was always Aston Villa, obviously, for the rivalry with yeah. Blues. And um, I scored scored three in the season that they got re relegated. I remember, I remember one time. Yeah. Know, and you milked it as well, oh, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they were giving me, like, the, the kind of person I am, I enjoy banter and, like, and I enjoy people giving me stick because I can, not only can I take it, I can give it back. So, like, in Birmingham, it was kind of, I knew if we didn't win or if I didn't score, like, like I couldn't go to any pub. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I was just going to get ripped. So, um, yeah, that was that. That was a bit of back and forth. But then obviously now it's got the, the whole Arsenal thing because of the, the stuff we did last season. But um, I enjoyed that game. I, like, I genuinely buzzed off that game. You, 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 you like it, innit? You love, yeah. when, you love when you're getting a load of stick. You like yeah. that banter, don't you? Yeah, of course. And uh, it makes me like want to sh shove it in your face a bit more. But also I've got, I'm humble enough that like, you know, like when we lost, I, I come on your show and stuff after I spoke to you boys down, yeah, downstairs. Yeah. I don't, I don't hide from it. Like when I'm, when I'm good, I'm good. When I'm bad, I'm still good. So um, yeah, for me, I just mm. you gotta be able to take it at it. So it's all bad at the end of the day. No one's gonna put their hands on me, and I'm not mm. gonna put their hands on anybody else. So let's just promote some peace, isn't it? Mm. What, do, what do you think of fans' opinions? Because you know, mm. nowadays, you know, I mean, so many platforms out there where yeah. fans mm -hmm. get to have their say. It, it never used to be like that, but no. you. You as players now, do you you know you can hear directly from fans or with all these different social media platforms? Yeah. Um, again, depends on the characters because um, I've read a lot of things recently, like players like saying oh, I've had to delete my Twitter and di like this kind of thing because of abuse. But I, the way I am is like if you can't take it, then you shouldn't have been on it in the first place. You can't you can't take the the good. Like when you so like for example, we played well against Spurs. So if I'm just gonna milk it then and go, ah, oh, we're great, we're great, we're great. When we lose to 
let's just say we lose to Arsenal, for example, I then can't go, ah, I'm not going to go on social media today. You've got to be able to take it both both mm. sides of, both sides of the coin. But I grew up in a pub environment, so I used to go, I still do, go and watch the games, like on a Super Sunday. I'll go sit with my mates and I enjoy different people's perspective of football because yeah. like, me and you watching football will see it completely different. It doesn't mean you're right, I'm wrong and vice versa. So I enjoy it and that's why obviously I've watched your show a lot. Um, I just think what's happening now with certain platforms is people have seen the success of your your guys' show and then milking it now, like trying to be too much. Like, I see so many people try to be troops, so many people try to be DT, like, mm. and people try to be like yourself. And I'm just like, I think the reason your show is so good and why you get my respect, which I told you this before, is that it's because it's authentic, it's, it's genuine. You've been doing it for that long now that people mm. could go, it's not, it's not a front. Mm. Now listen, we 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 with fans, right? Um, you know, do you do you as play? One of the things is sometimes there's a bit of a divide mm -hmm. between football fans and players, and I know that you're you're kind of one of those players that breach that divide. Okay. Um, but there is a divide sometimes where fans feel that footballers like yourself don't understand mm -hmm. fans. Don't understand what we're going through. Don't yeah. understand that we've travelled hours to that game got there you got beat and you didn't even come over and clap I'm not saying you yeah, but yeah, yeah, you, you know these sort yeah, of things yeah. happen do, do you guys do, do you think that's improving I think so I think so with social media I think the gap is bridging down again like I say with the, with the, the good and the bad people are starting to actually take attention now that like we're human beings as well at the same time so while it's a frustration from a fan's perspective that a player has not come over and clapped for example like I can understand from a player's perspective, you might not even be thinking about the fans. You might be like, if you're emotionally involved in a game like I am, in your head, you're like, oh man, we just, how did we lose that game? And like, you're kind of beating yourself up and you probably just like, just get me off this pitch. That kind of, mm. and it's not, a, I don't think it's a disrespect towards the, the fans. Me personally, I win, lose or draw, I always go and clap because I just appreciate everyone coming out to see me. And again, I've been the paying customer that side. So I think it just resonates with people that like, I've done it before and I do it and then I stop doing it like or giving like boots away and stuff more when we lost more of a like a, you know we appreciate you coming I know we were rubbish today here's a little something like a pair of boots to us is not a big deal but to mm. that person or that child that catches it it can mean a lot so that's what I used to do but then I got a stick for doing it and I just <laughs> thought you know what I can't win either way so now I just do it as a as a when I feel like it to be fair mm. now listen final question for you I was reading the other day that you've lost over a stone in weight. Yeah. Right? And you are looking trim, I've got to say, Thank right? Thank you very much. Now, any tips for me? <laughs> I, need to, uh, I need to drop some pounds, man. Ain't got any tips for me, man? Green tea is the way forward at the moment. Um, no, do you know what I did? I just, you've got to want to do it. Like, I, like I, even like my mum and that, I'd be like, oh, I mean, and can you get your nutritionist to do this? I'm like, mum, if you don't want to do it, if you enjoy your lifestyle, you enjoy your yard food or whatever, you're gonna keep eating it, so there's no point forcing yourself to go. I'm gonna go on this diet. You're not saying I've got to give that up, have you? I've got to give up the wasting in food. Mm, you have to. I've given up. I've given up no. sugar and um, and alcohol was a big one for me. So that no alcohol either. Now I'm like every every international break, I'll have a, a good go. No Jamaican food. Mm -hmm. No alcohol. No sugar. No. Bread. I could do without the sugar too. I'll take the sugar. Yeah. Bread I don't really eat a lot of nowadays. Milk. But. A little bit of milk. Yeah, see, so no bread, no milk, no sugar. No, anything that tastes good, just <laughs> no. So <laughs> just become accustomed to having meat and veg with a little bit of couscous or something like that. So, And it's portion control as well. With our backgrounds, it's, it's just get as much as you can as of when. And if it's a Sunday, then everyone eating well. So I'm going to like barbecues with my own little things in the summer. It's killing me. Sounds boring, man. Very boring. But it's beneficial, isn't it? Now I'm getting all the, the rewards for it. So like it's a, it's a mindset thing for me as well. So I can re like take all that good stuff away, but then the, the football's working. So then international break, like I went, I just went to Dubai with my pal and we had, we had a good, good three or four days, you know what I mean? Just some good drinks, ate what I wanted, come back, back to work. Listen, keep up the good work. I'm gonna pass <laughs> on all that, right? But keep up the good thank work. Um, and thank you very much for the interview today. Thank you. Anytime, anytime you guys, thank you.